does that uh, uh, create an issue initially if you've not had contact with them, though, where, where they're quite intimidated and shy initially? Do you not come across a, a little bit perhaps uh, overly dominant if, uh, if you approach the situation in that manner initially? Well, what's likely to happen in, uh, in a business encounter is the first physical point of contact is going to be handshake in most cases. Uh, if, if they're Westerners or had exposure to the West, and I'm excluding largely Asian people here and Japanese because uh, handshaking is not necessarily the norm in those regions. They might have other ways of, of greeting, such as bowing or using a Y, but if they, if they had exposure to doing business with Westerners, uh, they're likely to do a handshake. But if you go to Japan, for example, which I was last week, uh, when Mr. Ikimoto gives you his handshake, he might be a powerful executive with a big company, but he gives you four breakfast sausages. <laughs> and you've got all of these squashy things that are going all over the place. Now, if you're raised in a Western or Western European country, uh, a soft handshake is unconsciously, and not necessarily correctly, but unconsciously uh, connected with soft personality, that this guy must be a bit of a wimp because you've got this dead handshake. Yet in Japan, he might be the most powerful guy in the company. Uh, you also find, generally speaking, in Asia, that Asian people will give a soft handshake because many of them have never had experience with handshaking. Jesse, they've, they've seen it on the TV. They've seen it on American movies. They know how it's done, but they've never necessarily had experience on how to do it, so they're likely to give you a, a dead salmon. And so the key to creating rapport with a handshake is twofold. First, that you keep your palm absolutely straight, that is vertical to the ground, not with the palm facing down, which is perceived and felt as you're being aggressive or coming on heavy, or with the palm facing upwards, it's like you're submissive. It's like you only have the palm up if you're trying to apologise about something that you screwed up. But you keep the palm straight. And the second part, which is the key here, is to give the same pressure that you receive. Now, on a scale of 1 to 10, a strength, 10, ten is, a, is a knuckle grinder. That's a very strong grip. Uh, 1 is, uh, is a piece of jelly. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, my default position, and everybody has a default position, is about a 7. So if I meet, if I meet you and we shake hands, if yours is a 7, instantly we'll feel the connection because we've got the same pressure and the palms remain straight. What if, though, if you've got a, a four in a handshake because you're a, a plastic surgeon? plastic surgeon will give you... He doesn't want to shake hands or she doesn't want to shake hands. That's their tools of trade, as it is with artists and musicians. They don't want to shake hands, but if you reach first and force them into it, they're likely to give you a, a dead fish. And you might make a misinterpretation on this. And so uh, if you give me a four and I give you a seven, I'm, I'm putting 30% more pressure into the handshake at the, at the opening point of the interview of that face-to-face -face encounter. And you're, at a gut level, going to think, hey, this guy's coming on a bit strong. So therefore, you, you stand back further, and you're likely to watch me to see what I'm going to do next because I gave you a dominant handshake. So if I want to create rapport with you, if you present me with a four, I'll give you a four back, which to me doesn't feel right, but I know that it feels right for you. So by giving you a four back, you start to think, I like this guy. I mean, the minute I met him, the vibes were good. Now, there's, there's no vibes. There's no chemistry. That's just stuff you read in magazines. There are exact things happening when you meet people that create reflections and attitudes about the other person. So you match the same pressure received. So if I meet somebody with a nine, for example, like a knuckle grinder, I've got to pick up 20%. Or oh, that person's going to think I'm a bit soft, a bit wimpy. And uh, where I need to create rapport and get them on side and maybe convince them to do something, a, a seven's not going to get, do me much justice with someone who comes on with a nine. So match the pressure, keep the palm straight. And right at the outset, people will, will feel some some sort of connection with you. Mm. This leads directly into my next question when you've talked about sort of different cultures. And what I wanted to ask is, you know, in business we often hear about the difference in sales techniques between countries and continents, so between Australia to North America to Europe. When you're doing this, are there similar changes in body language when it's clear that you're in a, a different geography or, or dealing with very different audiences? Yes, absolutely, but it's becoming less and less as time goes on. Uh, with all the generations of, of most other cultures, there normally are a group of specific gestures or movements or body language behaviours within that particular country, and they've been there for probably thousands of years. Uh, we, we know that through looking at art, and particularly wall art. You can see how people use gestures and body language in fr like frozen pictures from the past. So we know that some things haven't changed in hundreds, even thousands of years, maybe hundreds of thousands of years. That's the possibility of that. Uh, but they're all disappearing. So if you get younger generations, say the under 30s, millennials and Gen Ys, uh, worldwide, their behaviour, body language and customs will be pretty much the same now. And the reason for that's interesting. 
they're the first generation raised watching Netflix, watching American TV and American movies. Uh, all video games are produced and made by the Americans. They might be filmed someplace else, but they've all got American body language in there. Everything is, uh, is the USA. And so as a result of that, we took a film about three years ago of uh, 10 and 12-year-old kids interacting in Russia. When I was in Siberia, I go to Siberia several months of the year, uh, in various countries in Europe, in the United Kingdom, in the United States, in Iceland and South Africa. And when you play the film back with the sound off, if there are no distinguishing clothing things these kids are wearing, you cannot tell where they're from. You don't know whether they're English, Americans, Germans, French, because they're all behaving in the same way. And they've got this from video games and from television. But if you look at their grandparents, if you film their grandparents, which we also did, you will see a lot of cultural differences in things in terms of how they're behaving, which have come from their parents and from their parents, and it's all historically handed down. Most of the, most body language is, is historically handed down in a culture. But those cultural differences now are completely disappearing. So I predict within one generation from now, uh, Jesse, that body language will be pretty much the same language everywhere. But in the meantime, when we're in this hybrid stage, the key is very simple. If you go to another country, and in the last seven days, I've been to seven countries, and the thing I do in every country when I go there, even though I know most cultures pretty well, I say to my host, show me what is the normal greeting and farewell signals here, for example. So when I was in uh, Kazakhstan, for example, two days ago, that, that's a big country, hangs off the bottom of Russia. In a business environment, all men shake hands, but women don't. Now, if you go to Germany, men and women both shake hands. Now, in Germany, they'll give you one, two pumps, and the hold for three, then release. Whereas in France... They'll shake your hand maybe two or three times every day. They'll shake your hand when they see you, when they say goodbye, when they meet you again, when you make a good point, they'll just shaking your hand all day. Men and women both do this. But in Kazakhstan, women don't shake hands. And uh, I, I made the error of, uh, I, I came from, from Germany, I made the error of not saying to my, my local host there, just demonstrate for me. And it's what you've got to do. You ask, please demonstrate how you say hello, how you say goodbye. And it wasn't that it, until I was reaching for women's hands that they looked a little bit shocked. And these were powerful business and women they saw my hand coming and and they kind of half expected it but didn't know what to do so i asked the host how do you say goodbye how do you say hello how do you greet people how do you thank people what are some of the things you should or shouldn't do and importantly what are the rudest most insulting gestures you can make and get them to give you a demonstration of that because you would be surprised shocked horrified jesse the things like what you as an american and i as an australian might use the okay signal which is where the index finger presses to make a ring against the thumb now, that's got 17 meanings. Depends where you come from. If, if you use it in Japan, it means money. It's a shape of coins. If you use it in southern Europe, like France, for example, it means zero. It means naught. Yet for you and I, it means spot on. Yet in Turkey and Greece, it's a rude insult. It's a sexual insult. Right. They're calling you an a-hole. Those countries, so you go to Greece and tell them they're really nice people using the OK, and they ask you to leave. <laughs> okay. So ask the host what, what you should do. And, and I'm serious about this, this rude you. I've seen so many Westerners make dreadful, dreadful mistakes by using OK signals and the thumb-up signal, which usually means pretty good for Westerners, but in some places like northern Greece, it means go and get stuffed. <laughs>